What's up guys? I'm Safi. I uh, hope you're okay and safe and not scared and everything's going good. Welcome back to the part three, final part of Photoshop Lightroom tutorial on portraits. Don't want to waste your time. Let's get to it. Alright guys, we're going to focus on two primary methods of dodging and burning. One is the quick and easy way to like get it done, you know. The other one is for extreme diligence and attention and patience. So let's get started. I'm going to start the screen recording. If you don't know how to do a screen recording on a Mac, it's very simple. We're just going to... Just click on QuickTime, go to the top left corner, click File, click New Screen Recording. And then it's going to say, OK. And we are going to, my snaps are horrible. Oh my god. OK, we're going to right click on the layer here. And we're going to duplicate it. This is the quick and easy way to do it. We're going to call it Light. Done. We're going to duplicate it one more time. We're going to call it dark. Done. Uh, turn off the dark layer so the dark layer is off. Only the light layer is on. You're going to go to blending modes. You're going to click it. You're going to go to screen. Now the light is completely blown out, um, which we don't want. We're going to double click this layer. This layer styles is going to pop up. Now, we're going to go to the third box to the bottom. There's a section that says underlining layer. We're going to drag that to the right. And we're going to keep an eye on the picture. Let's give the cheekbones, the forehead, the chin, and the nose just a tad bit of light. You're going to hold the option key on your keyboard. I don't know what this is on a computer. but. I do know that it's an option key on a Mac. You're going to click on this and it splits it. It's an arrow. It splits the arrow. You're going to drag the blacks and the highlights apart from each other to give it a nice highlights on her cheeks and face. Perfect. I think that's awesome right there, just as it is. Click OK. So that's done. Now we are going to see a before and after. Before, I mean, this is with it on, with it off. With it on, with it off. Now we're going to go to the second. We're going to turn on the dark layer. We're going to go to blending options. We're going to click multiply. Now, if you can see, the picture is completely dark. We're going to double click on it and go to the highlights region of the image right here. We're going to hold option, split the layer. We're going to drag that to the left. We're looking for a good spot to leave it. See right there is good. Now you can tell that this is way too much. It's not just a little bit, it's completely too much. We're going to go to fill and lower the fill until we're satisfied with our shadows. I'm happy at 45%. Please use the numbers that you are happy with. We're going to go to the highlights and reduce those by a little bit. We're going to go to 57. We're going to hold shift, click on both light and dark layer. We're going to come down here and create a group. Now the group has been created. Look at the before and after of this image. Before, after. I mean, there's no doubt. 
using that method for an easy, quick dodging and burning is good. Let's go to part two. Okay, so let's. this is part two of the video where we're going to focus on actually dodging and burning the professional way. We're gonna click on adjustments. We're gonna go to curves. If you do not have the adjustments, go to window and click on adjustments. Uh, we're gonna click on curves. There's multiple ways of finding curves. You could go down here, right click it, or click it and just put curves. The first curves is gonna be the highlights. So we're just gonna boost this up until you don't see the bad shadows on our face. There you go, that's pretty good. Hold Command and press I to invert the layer. Now we're gonna do one more of those. Click on the curves layer, drop down the shadows. Not too dark, dark, dark enough, but not too dark. Uh, hold Command and press I. Go down to double click the curves to and rename it to darks. And the other one, lights or highlight. Enter. Now, if you have a pen, sensitive pen, please go to click this, go to pen settings, go to transfer. Put opacity jitter on pen pressure, flow jitter on pen pressure. If you're using just your mouse, make sure your opacity and flow up here are less than 4% or 1% because you don't have as much sensitivity. We're gonna start on the highlights first. So let's zoom into the face. We're gonna go to brush. We're gonna make sure our hardness is very low. Our opacity is at six. Our flow is at 17. Okay. Now that you have set your opacity and flow to six and 14, uh, let's zoom in very close to the face and click on our brush, lower the brush, and we're going to get rid of shadows. Very low, I'm on eight pixels. Oh, make sure that you have pressed X because we're working with highlights. Make sure the this is white. And we're going to get rid of shadows. Zoom in much more than that. Now, this process takes a very long time, but it is the correct way of getting rid of any dark areas that you do not want in your image. Now obviously this is too low for me. I'm not going to do as detailed job as I normally would, which I would go through all these little like skin parts of the video but let's work on this dark area. Brighten this up. As you can see, I'm being very destructive. However, I have a plan. Anyways, I wanna show you the concept of how this works because obviously you wanna be much more professional. Now, I wanna fit in screen and show you the difference. So, this is after, this is before. After, 
before. And that was quick, fast. Uh, I'm obviously being destructive. I'm not doing the proper way. I'm supposed to keep it at like 2%, 3%. Now we're going to lower the opacity. To... 73 because I did over apply and I don't want to damage the image let's go back there's a little bit more here remember you don't want to get rid of the face's actual tone So now we're going to work a little bit on the forehead and we're being very gentle, getting rid of any dark spots in the forehead, eyebrow area, I'm going to brighten the nose. Okay, I would say before, after, before, after. Okay, now you can obviously brighten the eyes if you wanted to. Brighten the highlights of the whites. Hmm. It's better to look at the image from afar to see if you've over destroyed it, which happens. And I am, trust me, I'm definitely over destroying this image. We're going to move on to the shadows. So I clicked on the shadows. Uh, we're going to activate the whites, obviously. Uh, and now we're going to add a little bit of shadows underneath the cheekbone right here to make it look a little sharper. Be very gentle handed. We're gonna go under the chin to make the chin look sharper by adding a sense of straightness. Very gentle. As well as right here on the nose, to edge of the nose. I'm gonna darken that area. Add a little bit of shadows in this right side of the lip, under the lip, add a little bit of a chin here. And on the edges of the face to make it look more rounded. Next to the hair, increase the size by a lot and add some to the side of the face. Now there's so much you could do with this. Trust me, I am not even cracking the iceberg here. There's much more advanced tutorials you can look up if you have reached that level yet. Um, I'm just giving you the basics and how to begin to understand and comprehend how light and darks work. Or after, before, it almost looks like a different person, but not really. You're just getting rid of the bags under the eye. 
you've preserved a lot of the textures and we're done thank you so much for being here today and putting up with my inconsistent ways but uh, I hope you learned something overview we did two methods of dodging and burning one we duplicated the layer three times and now you could do this as many times as you want um, and use them the, as creatively as you would like one we changed the blending mode to screen and the other we changed the blending mode to multiply multiply darkens the image uh, and screen blows out the image on screen we messed with the shadows on multiply we messed with the highlights so we can control where the light and the darks are being placed for part two we focused on the com complete and utter control of light and shadows we created two curved layers uh, one of them we increased the brights and the other one we dropped the shadows we command eyed on both of them inverted them to blacks then we got our pen tool uh, our brush tool we lowered the opacity to if, especially if you don't have a pen and you're doing this it has to be on two percent or three percent with your opacity at two to three percent with your flow around like ten and then you gently zoom in and you get rid of those uh, things that's m micro dodging and burning now when you go to global dodging and burning where you're messing with the facial structure you're going to do the bags and circles under the eye, the forehead, the blending of the nose, the edges of the thing. So you have so much control. Then when you're finally done with that, you're finished with a complete A to Z Lightroom color correcting Photoshop frequency separation, which you do the, uh, you know, the face, getting rid of the acne and all that stuff. And then finally, a much more comprehensive getting rid of blemishes and facial reconstructing of dodging and burning so thank you for spending all that time of yours listening to me i hope you learned something and i hope you take these tools and become an even better editor than i am and become awesome peace thank you